Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about using vertex animation tool sets of Sedgeback Labs. In this video, I'm going to cover how to use the soft body mode, for example, for a cloth simulation. So in Houdini, I already have a setup. You can get these files as well. So when I press play, it will actually here break down uh, this cloth. So that's what I currently have here. So I want to bring this then inside of a game engine, like Unreal or Unity. And I'm going to show you the steps of doing that. So first, if you're interested in the setup of this simulation, I first create a plane. I did a remeshing to create more geometry. I'm also going to here fracture the pieces. So we actually know the simulation knows where to fracture or break pieces. Then I'm also going to make a group for sticking. So this is the part that won't be simulated. And we then use a vellum clot here to then actually define certain properties for the clot. And we also use the sticking group to make sure that's not animating. Then important here is using the vellum weld. This is actually for the breaking part. So we can enable breaking here. And then we actually have the solver, which is doing the simulation. So here, when I press play, I will have that simulating. So here at the top, I have a sphere that is actually moving down over time and you can, as you can see, it's colliding with my cloth and it's going to tear my cloth apart into pieces. So this is the setup. I'm also making sure that I'm like moving this a bit in the middle of my world. So my pivot is here where I have the zero. So I can quickly now adjust it where I would like to see my pivot in the game engine as well. And I'm also using a null node here to output this. So this is actually my output. So I'm going to reference this in my output system. So now with this ready, important here with the soft bodies animation is that we also need a consistent amount of polygons and points. So the tool will also warn you if you're not consistent with that. So that's how this mode works. So if you are not consistent with this number, with the amount of polygons and points, you need to use another method, which is probably the dynamic remeshing. And this is used for fluids. So now let's export this. And often I would make an extra tab here by just using a new network and I can just switch this to output and here I can have multiple outputs. So what I want in this output now is I want to use the vertex animation tools. So we can just type in vertex animation tools. So of course, make sure you have side effects labs installed and also the latest version uh, of that. So we can go here to window side effects labs. So very important. I have made a video on how to install everything, so watch that before continuing with this one. I highly recommend that. So here, let's go into our settings and let's talk about the important settings now. So first of all, we need to set a mode. So like I said before, we're going to use a soft body. So for the cloth, and we're going to select our game engine. Also very important that we select the right game engine. Now we also going to set a frame range. So by default, it's going to grab what, whatever you have. So and currently I have hundred frames. If you need more, you can add more. If you need less, you can add less. So in my case, hundred is enough. So it, uh, so we have this basic animation here of hundred frames with that. Then we need to say what geometry. So I'm going to grab here this icon. I'm going to select my geometry. So we're going to here grab the cloth outputs. So you could also try to just grab the cloth, but I specifically like to target these null nodes so I exactly know what to expect from that. So these are the base settings and we are almost actually already ready to export. So by default, we don't have to change much. So you can just press render and you already get some decent results. So here in the settings, we have some settings specifically for the soft body. So we can compress the normals into our position alpha. In this case, I'm not going to use that. We have done settings for all the modes. So this is the first toggle might be important. So if your geometry input is cached, so currently if I go back to my network, I'm not actually caching out geometry. So if you use, for example, here the cache node, so the file caching sub, this can be of course heavily recommended if you're doing something more complex. As you could see in my scene, the things it's calculating pretty fast, so it's not really needed to do a full cache system. But definitely, if you cache your animation, make sure you also toggle this on or off. So in this case, I'm actually not caching this. So I'm going to disable this. And then important here is to setting the texture format. So I'm going to make sure it's an HDR. So if you're 
game engine doesn't support 16 or 32 bits we're gonna can switch to an 8-bit as well but in this case i'm gonna leave that on i'm also going to use this format there are some other formats but we're gonna leave it as it is we have some other uh, settings here export spare color mesh in the vertex color uh, we can include a debug plane which can be very useful if you want to debug values between what you see here and the game engine we can also here uh, export custom attributes let's say i would like to have for example as you can see here like i would like to see for example the h value but i don't think i have a h value in my cloud sim or for example the velocity value so we can get these values and export it as well but in this case uh, we don't need that then we can also set a target uh, render for the width uh, but you don't have to uh, tweak this or touch this too much it will actually by default do a pretty good job at sort of like uh, choosing the best, best texture for you but you can always play around with that if you have something like a very if you have a more complex situation more complex simulation then you might be able to tweak this more to actually have something that, that fits your needs but in this case if you're doing something like this you don't need to touch much the, of these settings now here we have input so this is just some information if you want to input certain data so if you want to for example here like the position is something that's required you can uh, optionally have some colors some alpha some uvs like these are some other information uh, the tool can you see, can be seen as input attributes then we'll have a export menu and this is of, of course important so we're going to set a location i'm going to rename this to uh, for example tutorial uh, clot and we can also name here either the assets so by default it will actually take the node name uh, so we can give the node name a better naming so like clot uh, simulation we can also add a suffix on the geometry so here we can include for example the frame count or the fps that we currently have in houdini so we can add that to the file naming so that might be useful to know in your game engine what your total amount of frame number was or the fps you, you use now also we can hear this is what it is including so when i press render we're going to export geometry position rotation and colors if you for example only want geometry and position then you can click this to only have that but we're going to leave it as this and currently uh, for example colors might not be really interesting in my case then we have some advanced settings I'm not going to go too much in detail with them. This is again, if you want to do something more specifically, we can enable or disable some toggles here to do something a bit more specific. Uh, but in this case, it's not needed. We can also have like target engine, uh, which we don't need to touch really. And also interesting here is then our real time shader info. So if I click on this button, it will pop up a menu. And for example, I'm using uh, Unreal 4. So here we actually have some installation guides and other things for setting up. So this is very useful if you want to uh, re-watch the documentation about this. So very useful. Now with all that set up, we are just basically ready to just click render and see what it gives us. So if everything went right, you should have now a folder with your geometry for the mesh and you should also have a folder with the textures uh, for the vertex animation so this is what we're going to import into unreal uh, and then set up any shader so in unreal here i can just basically grab the folders and drag and drop that in here and then we need to set our import options so this is very important to set right uh, and we need to make sure we are enabling or disabling the right toggles so first of all make sure here the vertex color is set to replaced very important that we have that because there is information on the vertex then we're going to disable here all of these toggles we have for example uv data in different uv channels so we don't want to have any light map generated there so we're going to be careful with that we're going to here enable that or transform vertex to absolute and also here important is to actually import the normal and the tangents very important to have that both then we're going to scroll down we're going to leave the transform as this we're going to here enable convert scene disable the other ones uh, then our material creation so we have here our uh, materials and important here is to just 
make sure this one is on you just be able to import this and this should be good to go so now i have this i also have the same folder structure that i had so what i'm going to do now with textures so i already set some correct mesh import settings so what i'm going to do with the textures is i'm going to click on all of them and i'm going to right click and i'm going to say scripted actions and i'm going to say use the vat hdr textures so the hdr textures is referencing to the setting uh, we did in houdini so in houdini you set the texture format to hdr so if you choose non-hdr you're going to also have to set that to a non-hdr inside of unreal so with all of that done we can just click save to make sure everything is saved then we're going to go here to my uh, layers and create a material you can just call it vertex animation uh, cloth so here we have that so we have a basic uh, material and what we do in this material is we right click and we just can type in side effect and we should see our functions for, from side effects so if you have everything installed you should be able to see uh, these material functions now we are currently again working with soft body so we're going to enable or place the soft body uh, node and this will require some setup but once you plugged in this node you'll be, you will be good to go so important here is, uh, for example, the normal and the world offset. So the world offset will actually move your uh, vertices around. So we're going to here toggle the normal. And it's also said that the tension space needs to be turned off. So if I go into my material here and type in tangent space, we're going to turn that off. So make sure you have that off. Then our world position offset, we can then include that here as well. Then what is more important here is then we have our custom UV channels. So we have multiple UV channels with some certain information to do something. So we're going to also want to have UV channels here on this material. So we're going to click on that and we're going to make sure that's, uh, that this is open. So make sure you open this thing here. And under the settings, we have a custom UV channel and we're going to press number five. So we have our UV channel 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So now I want to use this and plug that in over here in the same number. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're not using a 0 here. So that is set up. There are some more settings you could do. Uh, you could also have the color, but I actually did not really include any color. So that might not be interesting. And I can also just use a here a color node. And let's say I want to have a bluish uh, cloth here so we have that then I just press save and this is then my result so currently it's not doing anything special so let me go into my scene here and place our geometry so we have that plane and I also want to then place my uh, cloth here so this is my material and you'll see that this won't be working so the reason for that is because we need to make an instance. So this is where things are getting interesting. So when we make a material instance, we now actually have all the parameters that we need to have. So this node, placing this node will automatically create these parameters for you. So you don't have to manually set this up. This is all done for you. So you can easily uh, have this as well. So important here is of course, we need to set our texture. So we need our position and rotation. So let's uh, drag that over here. So position and rotation and press save. And of course, we need to assign my material to this. And you, as you could see, it's already working really well. So let me grab that high rub. And just by placing your textures, we have a great result. Now, there are some more settings, as you can see, to tweak. So it's like right now, for example, it's automatically playing. Uh, if you want to control the play rates or set play at a certain point, you can then do a blueprint that uh, controls this value. Uh, we have here game time. We have also the playback speed. Also important here is the Houdini FPS. So let me switch to Houdini. So in Houdini, we have here at the bottom, we have actually our uh, global animations options. 
and I'm actually here using 24 FPS, but in the game it's actually already set to 60 FPS. So in my case, actually also ideally would have to set this to 24. So then I have the exact same result in Houdini and in Unreal. So we can also again play around with the time rate. If this needs to be faster, we can speed it up. If you want this to be slower, we can slow it down. So as you can see, it's going very slow. This is also where interpolation frames is very useful. It will make things smoother. So if I enable this, it's going to take a moment. Interpolate between frames. So it will try to make things smoother if there is not enough information. So right now, it's actually going more smoother than if I would disable uh, the interpolating frames. If I look from a different angle here, my cloth actually also needs a double-sided material. So if I go back to my material, and make this double-sided. So let's press apply. We now have a double-sided material. But I see that sort of like my normals are a bit weird. They are off. So I'm going to have to make sure I'm also here enabling two-sided normals. And that will actually fix that issue for you. So by enabling this, as, as you can see, this gives us a better, more accurate result. And yeah, that's it for this video. So there are more settings you could play around with. Uh, but by now you should be able to have a working soft body animation from Houdini here inside uh, Unreal Engine to make something super cool like this. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you, and thank you for watching.